like some other large retailers, Tesco is also developing its international operations in the transition economies of Central and Eastern Europe. One of the Central European countries where Tesco is developing is Hungary. This store has been open now for just over 18 months. It is our biggest one. In fact, this one and one we have in the, um, a place called Pestersjebet, which is just outside Budapest as well, are the largest hypermarkets in Europe. We started some five or six years ago by acquiring 30 small supermarkets in the northwest of Hungary, um, which we've continued to develop. We're now at a stage in the year 2002 where we've got 23 hypermarkets that vary from about 5,000 square meters up to one as big as this, which is 25,000 square meters. Um, and we have plans to open another six this year. The basic layouts and displays in this Budapest Tesco are familiar enough, although weighing and pricing takes place in the department rather than at the checkout. As in Korea and Thailand, the majority of the fish are live, and they are also mostly freshwater fish, reflecting Hungary's location far inland. This is definitely a hypermarket rather than a convenience store. There's a comprehensive range of electrical goods, not just entertainment products, but also white goods. And some unexpectedly outdoor merchandise. There's no sit-down restaurant, but rather a more Hungarian-style stand-up buffet. And a popular hot food takeaway counter. It's, it's a very, very large product range. I mean, a store of this size will stock 60 to 70,000 items, um, varying from fresh food to grocery right the way through to a very, very comprehensive range of non-food. Um, electrical non-food, televisions, fashion, clothing, um, all sorts of products that you'd expect to see in the UK, which are now available uh, in Hungary. Our food range by far is the biggest in um, Central Europe. Um, and continues to grow as we develop our suppliers with us and work together with them. It would be an impressive operation, even in developed Western Europe. But how well does it work in the transition economies of Central Europe? Car ownership in Hungary is well below one car per household. This militates against out-of-town locations, even with free bus services to the shopping centre from the centre of Budapest. Furthermore, the traditional Hungarian shop is found not in an out-of-town location, but close to the houses and apartment blocks in the centre of the city. They're generally greengrocers or butchers, rather than supermarkets, although you'll find the occasional convenience store. Most Hungarian shoppers are seen carrying just one shopping bag, not a trolley full. It's in this environment that Tesco operates. I think the primary reason is that there is business opportunity here. What they can do uh, 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 here in Hungary and in other transition economies uh, presupposes a huge vo a volume of investment. This is typically what small shops or Hungarian owners cannot do. If you want to build a huge hypermarket outside Budapest or anywhere in the country, you have to invest billions of foreigns. This is very difficult. Uh, small owners can organize their activity but cannot invest uh, in a short time a huge amount of money. Hungary, like several other transition countries, uh, tries to encourage uh, foreign direct investment and um, uh, large investors, very large investors, get almost automatic uh, tax advantages. Uh, they uh, very often don't pay profit tax for 10 years, 5 years, 10 years. Uh, uh, and uh, if they are also large employers, that's another big advantage uh, from the point of view of the Hungarian government. That's uh, also another, I would say, excuse to provide further tax ad advantages. Very often, um, uh, investments into the infrastructure needed by the companies is supported by the government as well, and sometimes they are given subsidies as, uh, uh, as uh, job creators. Uh, if a foreign investor comes here, 
the, the way they do business here is that they establish a, co a, a company in Hungary, uh, typically owned by 100% uh, owned 100% by the uh, parent company. Uh, and this, uh, uh, this is in fact a Hungarian company, although foreign owned. Uh, the rules are the, are the same. Uh, they have, uh, they, they, uh, have to do business under the uh, same acts uh, in Hungary. Uh, most of the employees are Hungarian. It is a recent development that uh, uh, the, uh, the top managers uh, can be Hungarians as well. This business is Hungarian. Its name is English but the vast majority of this business is run by Hungarians and we consider it very much a Hungarian business. Um, other Hungarian retailers, there's always room for Hungarian retailers. I mean, it's, it's a big and growing market, we just described. Uh, just the fact that we get bigger doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the smaller shops disappear. In fact, the tax breaks offered by the Hungarian state to foreign investors are targeted mainly at manufacturing industry. Retailers like Tesco benefit only to a limited extent. They benefit instead from the attraction of hypermarket shopping. If you uh, can afford going to uh, a large hypermarket, you can buy large quantities of goods, larger quantities of goods at much, much uh, cheaper prices. So uh, there's a changing uh, uh, habit here in Hungary. A lot of people go to these large businesses, of course, otherwise they, how could they uh, earn a profit here? But uh, on the other hand, uh, in, in the Hungarian society, uh, uh, we have, a, for example, a much uh, lower number of cars available. A lot of families don't have a car at all, and if they do so, they don't prefer driving a long ways every day or, or frequently. So I think there's a big room for retail, uh, Hungarian-owned small retail shops as well, because they are much closer, in the physical sense of the word, much closer to the customer. They don't have to go out of town, drive out of town, and buy things there. Small shopkeepers have not left the international supermarket chains to pick off the emerging middle classes. They are developing their own strategies. One thing they did was uh, they organized a few networks. One of them is the CBA network in Hungary, which is probably the most successful in organizing small shops. Uh, they have a common purchasing policy, which is a response to uh, the efficiency of the large uh, uh, multinational companies who can provide uh, lower prices, a wider uh, product assortment uh, and very good uh, quality products also and cheap products as well. The result is that uh, members of these networks are much more competitive on the market. They can, they can provide lower prices, uh, they have offices at different locations, typically inside town, cities and villages. Therefore, if you want to buy anything, you don't have to drive so far, you have to go uh, so far. Uh, therefore, uh, it, they are closer to the customers, especially the ones who don't have cars or, or, traveling, uh, or for whom traveling is more difficult. Budapest Central Market, a three-storey collection of individual and independent stores, is a recognition of the traditional benefits to small traders of getting together. Studying what's on offer suggests another issue. What Hungarians want to buy is very distinctive. What rice and kimchi are further east, sausages are in Central Europe. The extensive wine department centers around domestically produced wines, a matter of pride to Hungarians, just as German or Australian supermarkets emphasize their own wines. The vast majority, uh, probably over 90% of our products are sourced within country, within Hungary. Um, and as our volume has grown um, by opening more stores, our suppliers have grown in partnership with us. Uh, our approach to our suppliers is very much partnership. Uh, very much uh, giving them a vision of what we want to deliver to the consumer and helping them to work with us to actually grow to that, to that um, sort of image we want to project to our customer and quality. There's a lot of successful stories about uh, suppliers growing with us um, and we will continue to source our product from Hungary.
is that Hungarians want to source their own product? Uh, I think there's a number of small businesses in Hungary which have the chance to become suppliers uh, of Tesco and other networks, probably. Um, uh, they have to uh, develop their manufacturing bases to provide uh, uh, the quality needed by these uh, networks and also uh, the volume of products they need and the flexibility in terms of uh, delivering in time uh, uh, and in the, uh, according to the schedule what, what is needed by, uh, by these networks. And uh, they also have to solve the problem of uh, financing their activity. Very often, uh, uh, large networks pay on 30 days, 60 days, sometimes even 90 days. Uh, and it is very difficult sm for small businesses to finance their manufacturing activity. One answer to this question is factoring. Factoring means that um, banks would buy the invoices uh, 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 issued by small businesses. And since they can count on uh, paid, uh, pay, uh, count on paying for, this, for, their, for these uh, uh, invoices by large companies. This is a very low risk financial activity. Uh, therefore, this is a good opportunity for the businesses which become uh, suppliers of large ch uh, uh, chains uh, that, uh, uh, to finance their manufacturing activity. A large part of Tesco's success in the UK can be attributed to their energetic exploitation of all aspects of e-commerce. Is that true in Central Europe? We've just in introduced what we call EDI, which is Electronic Data Interface, um, which has been received very well by our suppliers. So within the next 12 months, we'll be able to pass to our suppliers all our orders and our customer demands electronically, and they'll confirm them with us, uh, and we'll eventually end up paying our suppliers electronically as well. So that's just been launched in Hungary, and we'll go across all of our business in Central Europe in the next two years. We're using a web-based uh, system, which is accessible to everybody, um, from the smallest supplier to the multinational suppliers that we deal with. I think the uh, major, uh, major advantage of using information technology is that it is much cheaper than the uh, uh, older techniques or uh, older methods used. Uh, therefore, if you use information technology, this is a huge competitive advantage for you. Uh, uh, I think uh, it is also uh, uh, an opportunity for small businesses to organize uh, their activity more efficiently, more in a more economic way. And they, they do so, so they have uh, a, a kind of um, information infrastructure, communication infrastructure for their networks in the retail industry. Uh, uh, they have uh, up-to-date information about the ne needs of the small chains and the individual shops, which help uh, the background organization to deliver in time the right quantity of goods they need. As Tesco Budapest continues, offering innovations not yet seen in Britain, keeping the expatriates in touch with home, and bringing their cheaper value range to the Hungarian consumer. What of the future? I think it will continue to be very exciting and very, very rapid. Um, I think that we will move um, more into maybe smaller formats. We'll look certainly at maybe moving into the small stores we know in the UK, where we have convenience stores. There's a lot of towns and villages in, in Hungary and in Central Europe that don't necessarily justify a large hypermarket like this. But certainly the Tesco brand and the Tesco service and the Tesco price can be brought to them in a smaller format. I think the Hungarian consumer is changing at a very, very fast pace and, not, uh, and will continue to do so. And their demands upon us will, will, will go very much in line with what it has done in other parts of the world we trade. Uh, they'll, want, they'll still want uh, very, very competitive prices. Uh, they'll want good quality and they'll want good stores and good service to, to buy in or a good internet shopping base to do it so. Uh, and we are proven throughout the world to be able to react to that. The Hungarian small retailer reacted to the arrival of the powerful Western groups by combining as a buying consortium. That response is also found in the UK. In the next band, we leave Tesco and look at an association of small retailers.